It is Thursday, February 11th, and this is our last bell work for this week because we all have tomorrow off. Woohoo! So this week you have started to learn how to multiply mixed numbers and fractions or mixed numbers and mixed numbers. And we saw from that area model that we could go ahead and change any mixed number to an improper fraction and then use the same strategies that we learned before to get our answer, right? So let's try that. For number one, I see three and two thirds times one ninth. Before I begin, I'm gonna change this to an improper fraction. So three times three is nine, nine plus two is 11 thirds times one ninth. Okay, now just like before, I'm gonna check this out and see if there's any way I can cross simplify anything. And when I look at this, like nine and 11, I can't do anything. There's not a number other than one that goes into both of those. And three and one, I can't do anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply my numerators. 11 times one is 11. And multiply my denominators, three times nine is 27. Now when I look at this, I notice it's not improper at all. I can leave it just like this. There's not a number that divides into 11 and 27 other than one. So you're done with that. Okay, number two, one and two fifths times one and two fifths. And again, we can't just say one times one and two fifths times two fifths. That's not how this works. This means one plus two fifths times one plus two fifths. So you can't just multiply it out. We saw that with our area model. We have to change these to improper. So five times one is five plus two is seven fifths. And the good news is this one's also seven fifths because it's the same. When I see five and seven, I notice there is nothing I can do, right? Seven doesn't end in a five or a zero. So I'm gonna multiply across the top. Seven times seven is 49. And we'll multiply across the bottom. Five times five is 25. Now this one, that's improper. I do want my answers to be in simplest form and written as a mixed number. So I know that 25 plus 25 is 50. And I can't quite fit two 25s into 49. I can fit one. And if I know that 25 plus 25 is 50, then that would mean 25 plus 24 is 49. My denominator doesn't change. So your final answer for number two should be one and 24 25ths. All right, for number three, I see a whole number. So when I rewrite this, I'm gonna go ahead and write 18 over one. I'm gonna change this one and five six to an improper fraction. Six times one is six plus five is 11 sixths. Now, before you start getting all huffy saying, Mrs. Trombley, I don't wanna multiply 18 by 11. How can you do this to us? Look at, I see a six and an 18 diagonal from one another. Isn't six times three 18? That means that six goes into 18. Six goes into 18 three times and six goes into six one time. So do you have to multiply 18 by 11? No, you have to multiply three by 11. And that's 33 and one times one is one. And last time I checked, 33 divided by one was 33. So there's your final answer. Okay, number four, two and a half times two and three fourths. I'm gonna go ahead and change those to improper. So two times two is four plus one is five, and I keep my denominator. And four times two is eight, plus three is 11 fourths. Okay, now when I look at this, I can't do anything with two and 11, and I can't do anything with five and four. So I just need to multiply across. Five times 11 is 55, and two times four is eight. That's improper, so I don't wanna keep it as improper. So I'm gonna ask myself, eight times what gets me closest to 55? Well, I know eight times seven is 56, that's so close. So it must be eight times six then. And six times eight is 48, and we have seven left. So 48 plus seven is 55, and our denominator doesn't change. So six and seven eighths is what you should have. All right, number five, one and two ninths times one eleventh. I need to go ahead and change this into improper. Nine times one is nine plus two is 11 ninths times one eleventh. I didn't have to change that, right? It's already a regular old fraction. And I do notice that I have 11 diagonal from one another. That means the largest number that will divide into 11 and 11 is 11. And any number divided by itself is one. So one times one is one, and nine times one is nine. So one ninth is what you should have. If you didn't do that to start, you got 11 99ths, and then 11 would still divide into both of those. So you could have simplified it that way. 
All right, and our last one for this bell work today, eight times one is eight, nine, 10, 11. So I have 11 eighths times, I'm gonna write that as a fraction, four over one. Now, if you want, maybe you just wrote 44 eighths, right? You could do that, or you could notice, hey, four and eight, four divides into both of those. Four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice. So 11 times one is 11, and two times one is two. Now, if you didn't do that, you had 44 eighths, and then you would still end up getting the same answer as us in the end. So right now, for 11 halves, that's improper. Two times five is 10, with one left over out of two. So if you didn't do that, you still end up getting five and a half. You just have to simplify this little fraction part at the end. All right, you're all set. Thanks for watching.